Hi my friends, in this video we're gonna talk about the organelles that help in protein synthesis for the cell and some other organelles that are related to the energy. Let's start. Protein synthesis is a complicated process that it's being done by the help of three different organelles inside the cell. First of all, ribosomes. Where are the ribosomes? Ribosomes are being built inside the nucleolus. Then ribosomes go outside of the nucleolus, which is located sure inside the nucleus, because you know that the nucleus has many holes or nuclear pores like that, that help in moving uh, both uh, ribosomes outside it and three different types of ribonucleic acid called RNA. First of all, we have three different stations. Station number one is the nucleolus, where ribosomes are being synthesized. Station number two is endoplasmic reticulum, especially the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And station number three is Golgi apparatus or Golgi body, because it was discovered by Italian scientist Camillo Golgi. Look, we will start quickly here from the nucleolus where the ribosomes are being built. Let's talk a little bit about the ribosomes. Each ribosome, look here, these mauve or purple spheres, in fact, every one of them consists of two subunits, small subunit and a large subunit. Let's know more about them. Each ribosome has small subunit and large subunit. Well, it's okay. After that, what again about the ribosomes? Each ribosome consists of four types of R RNA or ribosomal RNA and 80 types of polypeptide chains or polypeptides. What do you know about the polypeptides? Polypeptides are the raw material needed for building proteins so ribosomes are ready with two different bodies number one four different types of rrna and 80 types of polypeptide chains or polypeptide where are the rrna here i can make a simple figure like that imagine that this is rrna and we have large number of it here each ribosome consists of 60% of its mass of RRNA and 40% of its mass is being built above polypeptides or proteins. More points about ribosomes. Ribosomes are non-membranous organelles. They are the most numerous Number three, they are the smallest organelles in size. Let's return back to this structure, which is called endoplasmic reticulum, a network of membrane enclosed spaces. It's a network like that. It's look like curtains, okay? Curtain attached to each other, containing tubes or connections in, inside them. These ribosomes, are going through directly from the nucleolus into the inner space of the endoplasmic reticulum, letting the chance for the proteins carried on their surface to be modified. So the proteins that are carried on the ribosomes will be modified into the endoplasmic reticulum, especially the rough one. And after that, this uh, endoplasmic reticulum, we will have some regions like that. Concentrate, please. There is some region here that will bud off carrying some modified proteins into vesicles and then these vesicles will be carried to the last station. The last station which is called Golgi apparatus, I can call it the final customization shop. Why? Because Golgi, let's know about it, it can sort, modify, and package protein and other materials that are prepared by endoplasmic reticulum and these materials can return back into the cell to be consumed or 
will be secreted outside of the cell. Some books say that the Golgi apparatus works as a warehouse of the cell and its number will increase in glandular cells. I mean the cells of the gland like thyroid gland or pancreatic gland or any other gland. Another point about ribosomes that ribosomes may be found freely in the cytoplasm or attached to the outer surface of the endoplasmic reticulum like that, forming rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here is a little hint about the protein synthesis. You should understand one important point that, as I mentioned that this one is called the small subunit and that one is called large subunit. And here, don't forget that inside the ribosome, we have four different types of large number of RNA and 80 different types of polypeptide chains. Is it okay? Okay. And what do you think that line is? This line is called mRNA or messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is also being synthesized inside the nucleus in a process called transcription and after that it goes through nuclear pores to the cytoplasm where it will help in the process of building proteins building proteins will help in this area so the ribosome offers a suitable place for aggregation of many different organelles that help in building proteins how look at this different trna or transfer RNA, every one of these molecules can carry a specific type of amino acid. You know, these red circles, they refer to different amino acids like methionine or valine or glycine or phenylalanine and, and so on. They will go here on the ribosome and they will deliver, will leave their amino acid and then amino acids will attach together to form another new proteins. These proteins can be used inside the cell or can be packaged inside some vesicles like that to go to the final customization shop as I said Golgi bodies. In the next layer I will differentiate between the two different types of endoplasmic reticulum. In this layer I will draw a simple diagram for you. Imagine that you have a cell here and you have a nucleus and from the nucleus we have many pores that allow the ribosomes to go outside so they are the nuclear pores and the ribosomes go outside it from the nucleus this is the nucleus that help in building ribosomes ribosomes go outside and then they will be attached to endoplasmic reticulum that one for example Okay, making it rough and they will deliver their proteins inside it. After the modification, this protein will go to the final customization shop, which I mean Golgi apparatus, that one. Don't forget that this protein will be included inside some buds here. So the modified proteins from inside the endoplasmic reticulum will be transported to that active organelle which is called Golgi apparatus. This Golgi apparatus will modify proteins a little bit to make some protein that will be used inside the cell once more or being used for building some protein membrane or proteins needed for building lysosomes or enzymes that will be used inside the cell. We can make a little bigger here until they reach to the outside of the cell so they will make something for internal uh, transporting or internal transporting uh, space quickly I will show you that uh, this endoplasmic reticulum okay this is another one for example may go outside in the cytoplasm until the, it go to the outside of the cell like that so they work as an internal connection, okay, inside the cell, 
or it can connect between this cell and another neighboring cell. It's okay. Don't forget that uh, some materials that are being secreted by Golgi apparatus can go outside of the cell, as I mentioned in glands. Here is a comparison between two different types of endoplasmic reticula. The first one is called rough, the second one is called the smooth or rough ER, and that one is called SER. First one or rough endoplasmic reticulum will help in building proteins, while the other one, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, will will help in building lipids or steroidal hormones. This one will modify that proteins into number one enzymes or hormones. The other one will change some carbohydrates into glycogen for storage. The rough endoplasmic reticulum will help in building new membrane for the cells, while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum will change some toxic materials into less toxic ones. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is abundant in stomach, or gland cells, while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is abundant in liver cells. Let's go to the last point in our lesson today, the organelles that deal with energy. Here, we will talk about two organelles. The first organelle is called the chloroplast here in front of you. The second one is called mitochondria. Is it okay? And this is the diagrammatic sketch for it, and this is also the diagram for it. But under the electronic microscope, you will find it like that. Each chloroplast has a shape of something like a convex lens or a dome-shaped figure like that. And it has many discs inside it, and they are arranged over each other, and they are attached to each other as well. Okay, it has a transparent internal part. The mitochondria also has a double membrane like that. It has an outer membrane and inner membrane. This is a chloroplast. This is the mitochondria. It has an outer membrane and it's smooth. While the inner membrane has many folds and convolutions to increase the surface area for the reactions. Because you will know in respiration that some reactions happen here in this area. So they have to increase the internal space look here this is the mitochondria under electronic microscope it has an outer membrane and it's smooth and connected while the inner one makes some convolutions like that look it has a large surface area because it helped in making many reactions here if you are asked to draw a chloroplast quickly or a mitochondria i will help you in drawing it look for example, I have an outer membrane and then an inner membrane. You can make it with pencil several times so you can train on the drawing. After that, you have to put something like a disc over each other and they are connected to the neighboring pile like that. Each disc of them is called thylakoid and it has an internal lumen or called stroma. Outer and inner membrane, so they are a double membrane. Simply, this is a chloroplast. Don't forget that chloroplast has its own ribosomes, so they can build their own proteins and it has tiny pieces of DNA, so it can divide by binary fission. Go to the next organelle, which is called mitochondria. We will make it as in a 3D structure. It has outer membrane and inner membrane filled with grooves and folds like that to increase the surface area for the reactions. And don't forget also that it has its own ribosomes and its own DNA. Let's go to the last figure today or last layer today that to compare between mitochondria and the chloroplast. First of all, you, you should understand that both chloroplast and mitochondria deal with different types of energy. So they are called energy organelles or the organelle that deal with energy. Chloroplasts can convert light energy of the sun 
into chemical energy stored in food. I mean sugar. That will be changed into starch. While the mitochondria will convert chemical energy of food, I mean sugar, into thermal energy or heat energy. Chloroplasts are found only in plant cells and algal cells, while the mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells. And here that was all what I know about that topic. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Good luck.